having another little drive and story time. So, in the last couple of videos, um, I just gave a quick overview of what happened to me over the last year. I got married last week. Two weeks before that, we had uh, record-breaking, and I mean, you know, record-breaking flood. I don't think it had ever been this high in recorded history. And then a couple of weeks before that, a month before that, my friend and I nearly died on a kayak trip. Uh, and to give you some context, we bought our boats about a year ago, and we've been kayaking the Bing River and all the rivers around, um, you know, Chiang Mai, all year. It's been amazing. It was the best, it was the best purchase getting those boats. Not cheap, but you know, once you once you've got them, we've basically got free free hobby, free extreme sports hobby, and uh, we've been making the most of it. So as our skills started to improve, and we started to get a bit bored of the, you know, the Bing River and some of the slightly more, well, I mean, just, you know, just we wanted some white water. Basically, we felt we were ready for it. So. We went up to a place where we knew there was some decent rapids, not too bad. Um, we knew it was safe because we'd, we'd done that route of the river many times on long bamboo rafts. In fact, that's one of the, the activities that we do when people come, family come. We, we go up to Mei Wang and we rent these very, very long, they're probably five meters long, five meters um, bamboo rafts, four or five meters, and uh, get a big box of beer and bag of ice and just flow down the river it's it's great fun so we did that and there are a couple of rapids at points sometimes the people in the rafts have to get out and you know the, the men have to move it around the rocks and stuff but uh, for us the kayaks it was it was it was amazing almost perfect um, grade one grade two rapids really really nice and then we get to the bottom of this route that we normally would do and there are some young local boys who asked us if we're going to go down further. And we're like, no, what's down there? And they said, that's the real rapids, that's where the professionals go. And we finished our kayak trip this time, we weren't ready, we weren't prepared, so we, you know, we just, okay, next time. And that seed was kind of planted that there was this canyon of rapids that, at least from their body language, seemed like it was possible to do. I mean, they weren't thinking that it was absurd. So obviously some people, some professionals, some people that know what they're doing in the right sized boats have gone down there and had a nice time. Well, anyway, we, we prepared for the next week, got back up there and we said, we're gonna do this route again. And we did it. We get to the same point and all the boys that are there, these you know, just local country boys were like, nah, it's over, it's over, no more. And we're feeling quite arrogant and we tell them it's not over for us, it's just begun. And how right we were, because, well, we nearly died. And I wish, I wish I'd filmed it. I had filmed it, I'd filled the, the, I brought my GoPro, it was connected to the top of my helmet. I was gonna film the whole thing, but very early on in that trip, it was ripped off my head from some vines. find it in the water. I did eventually find it. I didn't film the whole thing, it's still recording. Yes! yes. Fucking <laughs> <sighs> sweet. Amazing. Oh, it was caught on, on that clump of shit, wasn't it? It's just in the ground. That is amazing. It's still recording. Still recording. Incredible. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Right. We're turning you off. But after that, I kind of just lost the motivation to stick it back on my head and and use it again. So it was probably a six or seven kilometer stretch down this canyon. It started off really good. The the rapids, the little mini waterfalls were amazing. But they just kept on getting steeper. And the water just kept on getting more and more extreme and I think I wasn't even the first time I came out I wasn't even hitting a rock it was just an undercurrent and you know it was basically flat at that point between these two waterfalls and some undercurrent just 
took the bottom of my kayak and flipped me over violently and I was shocked. I was thinking, if this is the power of the water, you know, I've not even hit, it doesn't even look bad. And like, I had no control whatsoever. I'm in the water, I'm freezing cold now, and all of a sudden the fun of the whole trip had kind of, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. But the problem was that we're trapped in this canyon. There's, there's no way out. The walls are, well, I mean, the walls are not far off as big as like these buildings at the sides, completely, slick and slimy with slimy moss there was only one way out and that's just to go down so we just kept on going and then at one point there was a waterfall that was just it just looked far far too big far too high and I just bailed out and yeah just pulled the cord on my on my spray skirt and um, hit in the water I thought my chances would be better off like walking down or going down in my own body which is probably a mistake actually I, sh I should have kept the boat obviously I, ju I just really didn't want to go over that waterfall in that boat um, so that that was that for me once as soon as I got out the boat you know the water picks it up and just takes it even if you want to take it out of the water I mean the boat's 25 kilograms it probably gets filled immediately with close to 50 kilograms of water there's just zero chance I can lift it get back in do anything it's gone um, so that's me boatless my friend Justin the flood rescue man he managed to maintain his boat I'm not sure if he went down that waterfall or a different one so anyway he couldn't wait for me I told him I'll see you. I'll see you further down. I'll, I'll be careful. Just you know, be told each other to be careful, and we'd see each other later. Um, so I basically just swam, climbed, just like grabbed my body like this to go over the waterfall. I mean, I had helmets and waterfall on, and basically, just, I just got completely beaten up. It felt like I had a really, really bad kicking, honestly. Um, yeah, just over, oh, just took each waterfall as I could. And then in the distance, as we're going, this is maybe half an hour later, I can see Justin standing on this rock and he's like waving to me and it was such a relief. I was like, thank God, Justin's still alive. I'm still alive, it's gonna be fine. It can't be much further. I'm thinking like, why is he waving so much? I, I can see, I, he can obviously see me, I can see him. But of course he wasn't waving to me, he was screaming, don't come over here, don't, but it was so loud. Which brings me to another point. Next time, we're going to need to have waterproof radios. That's absolutely essential. Um, so anyway, he's screaming to me, don't don't come here. Get onto the bank. Do not come here. And I'm thinking Justin's very, very excited. that He's, he's very excited to see me. Um, so yeah, just swim over to the rock. And then I can see on his face, just like, what's, you know, what's up with you, Justin? And I look around and I'm like, where's your boat? And he's like, well, we're both stuck on this rock now. I was trying to shout you to say, don't. And I looked down on the left-hand side, there's this giant waterfall. On the right-hand side, there's this giant waterfall. The water's coming so fast that there's no way for us to walk back upstream. And then we both settle into realizing that actually we're, 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 we're completely stuck. We're, what, what are we gonna do? All of our ropes, all of our stuff, our other boats. We had a small rope on us. Uh, which we did use in the end to get us off, get us off the rock. But yeah, and I remember sitting on that rock. I wasn't really worried for my safety. It was more about how am I going to get out of this without having to like escalate it to mountain rescue, and more importantly, like tell our girlfriends that we'd kind of failed and messed up, and it'd be very embarrassing. In fact, yeah, I wasn't worried about dying. I was worried about mine and Justin's girlfriends laughing at us and the next time we wanted to go kayaking them using this as an excuse for us not to you know like a reason like last time you nearly died so no you're not going this time something like that so anyway before before we before we'd gone on this trip or had told me you know if there's anything that happened this will be the last kayak trip so I was very very you know calling her to say we're stuck on a rock and we need some help was like you know the last option the last I, I would rather have I would say I'd rather have died, but I'd have to think carefully about what I would rather do, call her, or like nearly die. So anyway, we chose nearly die, and um, Justin managed to 
walk upstream very slowly um, and get to another small rock and throw a rope around which we then used to get off the rock and onto the ledge. While doing that, Justin slipped on the extremely slippy rock and cracked his elbow really badly. He ended up in hospital. Now, something you should know about Justin is the chances of him going to the hospital, unless it's really, really bad, are very, very low. Um, so yeah, he must have been quite a lot of pain to, to check himself into A&E. Anyway, so he's got a cracked elbow. We've been beaten up all over the place. We have managed to get off this 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 rock, and um, we basically just start making our way, as I had done before, just waterfall by waterfall, trying to climb down. Sometimes just swimming through it, and um, we find my my kayak, which was beautiful before, and now is absolutely covered in scratches and scrapes. Some of the internal foam support has all been flushed out. I don't know how the the um, waterproof bulkheads are all smashed up. They're not waterproof anymore. So I mean, yeah, the boats were really badly damaged. Um, anyway, so we've got the boats now. I get back into my my little boat. And uh, Justin, who's much heavier than me and much bigger, he's like six foot two or something, he uh, catches a ride on the back and yeah, we just weave our way through the, the rapids, which did in the end, it did, it dumped us out into this little, little dam, this little placid little lake and uh, Justin's kayak was there. So we, we didn't lose anything, we just, you know, we lost a little bit of dignity and we gained a whole lot of respect for the power of water. I mean, I always knew, obviously, that, you know, water is very, very dangerous. Everybody does, it's obvious, but it's not until that you're like literally pinned up against a wall with, with just water. That's all it is, it's just flowing water around you and you're stuck to that wall, that rock, like a limpet. It's, that just the forces involved are so powerful, you really have no chance. Um, and especially with us two, we, you know, we had no skills, we didn't have radios, we had boats that were totally unsuitable for kayaking in white water. That, you know, my boat's 3.14 meters, Justin's boat's three and a half meters long. These are for touring, they're for sea kayaking, they're not for weaving around white water rocks. Um, so yeah, that, that, that was a lesson learned. Not to not do it again, because I would quite like to do it again, but do it with more skill. Maybe bring a guide, bring a smaller boat, and bring radios.